It's time to try out the air-powered projectile. It safely and reliably demonstrates projectile motion. Here are five experiments to get you started. The first thing you're going to want to do is to determine the launch velocity. It takes about five seconds for it to go up and come back down when it's shot vertically. We can use the formula of velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Assuming that the time to the apex is half of the total time, we get that the velocity at the top, which is zero, happens at 2.5 seconds. Since gravity is about 10 meters per second squared, this gives an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. Of course, the next thing you're going to want to do is launch the projectile at an angle. Without doing any math, try to hypothesize which angle will maximize the range. This is an experiment that works both in high school and middle school for beginning and advanced students. The theoretical result is that 45 degrees should maximize the range. This is because the product of horizontal velocity and time in the air is maximized. A surprising result is that the complementary angles like 30 and 60 degrees will have the same range. This is because when the velocity is more horizontal, the vertical time gets lessened, and vice versa. By the way, when performing this experiment, I've been using these angled wooden wedges, which are optional, but very helpful. Another addition you might want to invest in is these varied end caps. You see, the inside of the nose is sealed on the end of the tube with these black caps, and when pressure builds up, the seal slips, and it's launched into the air by the force of the expanding gas. Larger end caps can capture more of that force, and so they go faster. This allows you to make new predictions that test the various velocities. But with the same end cap, you get the same time, every time. When you launched the projectile, you might have noticed that there were some clouds appearing at the base. This is the humidity in the air being condensed into a vapor due to the rapid temperature change. You see, when a gas expands rapidly, it cools. This is called adiabatic expansion. It's an important idea in thermodynamics, and this is a really good example of it. You probably have seen it when you open a champagne bottle, or even a soda. This effect also demonstrates that the projectile is safe and chemical free. And unlike a conventional rocket, the air-powered projectile will not explode or cause fires. It is designed to obey the laws of projectile motion, which missiles and rockets do not do. The sleek profile minimizes air resistance and turbulence, while increasing the accuracy of this elegant device. All right, it's time for a real calculation. We'll launch the air-powered projectile at 30 degrees. And we'll launch it into a parabolic arc. We have no choice. And it should hit the ground in a predictable spot but where? Where will it hit? That's the mystery. The initial velocity is 25. It's a different angle. VOY is VO sine of 30. You're right. That's 12.5 meters per second. All right. Similarly, but this is VO cos of 30. And that is 26. 21.6. 21.6. All right, fine. When do you think it's at the highest moment? Right here. <laughs> right there? Right there. Right there. Um, we should be able to calculate it um, from the VY formula. Let's use it. We're going to find the highest moment, and then we'll double it, and we'll get the total time.
Do you know why I'm using the VY formula? Because the VOY is zero. The what zero? VO. The what? The VY. Because that's VY. the velocity of Y. The VY. And the, yeah, yeah. VOY will never be zero because then it would never get off the ground. Because we know it's speed at, v, at, at Y. Yeah, at this moment, it's only moving horizontally. So VY is zero at the highest moment. But VOY, we already calculated, is 12.5. So some number times 10 minus 12.5 will add up to zero. Can you guess what that number is without a calculator? So the time at the top is 1.25 seconds, which makes the total time of flight Huh? Is wow. How so much? 2.5. 2.5. Twice as much. I do, I like this. Now we want to find x. The distance traveled in the x direction. Do you remember the formula for the distance traveled in the x direction? X is equal to v over x times t. I agree. The initial velocity never changes, so it might as well just be called Vx times the time of flight will give us the total distance traveled. Velocity times time equals distance. All right, we have one vote. Uh, the x velocity we already have calculated is 21.6, and this takes 2.5 seconds. And uh, somebody thinks that that's in the 50s? 54. Okay, 54 meters. All right, that's our, that's our theoretical prediction. All right, let's try out the experiment. Let's go see if this really happens. See the other side. Okay, so is that 60 parallel? What is it?